People's reactions to the PlayStation Classic has been mixed at best, with many complaints being aimed at the subpar emulation and the reliance on slower power code for some of the games. But despite the controversy, I thought it might be fun to review all 20 games on the PlayStation Classic in alphabetical order. So you better put that kettle on, because this is going to be a long one. Let's kick things off with Battle Arena to Shinden. This weapons-based fighter was a launch title for the system in the Americas and Power region. Sony America heavily banked on this game, and even used one of the characters as the mascot in promotional material. At the time, to Shinden's visuals were very impressive. In fact, the Japanese release highlights its graphical prowess on the front cover. But naturally, beauty is only skin deep, and to Shinden has not aged very well. Clunky controls, input latency, and a terrible camera system makes it difficult to enjoy it. I can appreciate the game's importance to the PlayStation brand, but I still think this slot on the PlayStation Classic should have been reserved for the superior Bushido Blade or Soul Edge. I never give up! Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention? <laughs> and I'm waiting for. I have to admit, I'm not a big fan of snowboarding games, and I probably carry the blame for the genre's demise. Having said that, I still had fun tearing up the steep vistas of Cool Borders 2. The controls and feedback aren't as great as Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, but the sense of speed as you dodge trees will definitely get the blood pumping. You can play through the competition modes or chase faster times in time trials, and score big points on the half pipe. Visually, the game looks really good, and the original soundtrack isn't half bad. However, the small selection of tracks does get repetitive after a while. Still, there's a lot of people who swear by this game being the best snowboarding game on the system, and since I'm not an expert on the genre, I won't dispute their claims. Time to grab your stubbies and diaries, because it's time for some Destruction Derby. Developed by Reflections, the same legends who brought us the Driver series, Destruction Derby is a ripper of a game where you turn your mum's Nissan Pulsar into a rust bucket. You can take place in the traditional Destruction Derbies where you smash into other cars, or you can compete in the more traditional stock car race where you shoot for the top of the podium. Unfortunately, the two-player mode is off the cards since it only works with the link cable and the PlayStation Classic doesn't support this functionality. Sony really should have opted for the third game in the series, Destruction Derby Raw, mainly because it comes with local split screen and way more content. On its own merits, Destruction Derby is still a solid game, even if it pales in comparison to its sequels. And I really wish someone would bring back this series. Imagine having a 40-player online destruction derby. While well, fans of Final Fantasy will always be divided when it comes to naming the best entry in the series, there's no denying Final Fantasy VII put the franchise on the map. Selling over 10 million copies worldwide, the game helped popularize the JRPG genre and inspired millions to draw their own teeth upon. At the time, Final Fantasy VII had the biggest budget of any video game with impressive visuals and breathtaking CG cutscenes. The actual game was also endearing, with one of the saddest deaths in gaming history. This was all accompanied by an amazing soundtrack composed by the legendary Uematsu. Unfortunately, the subpar translation doesn't hold up as well as the rest of the game, with the occasional grammar error taking you out of the experience. Despite this blemish, Final Fantasy VII is still one of the best games on the PS1, and if you haven't played it before, you're in for a real treat. Tell, 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 speak no brown, the naked 
47 got the power in his spell to move any mother that gets in the way. Just another power machine or on the freeway. Father with me, there's my MC homeboy. Knowing the rules ain't part of his program. Finding the right way around this map might be pretty hard because he's fucked on crack. <laughs> Grand Theft Auto is a franchise that needs no introduction, with its latest entry GTA V going on to become the most successful entertainment product of all time. But despite the franchise's success, many of its fans probably haven't had the chance to play the original game. Immediately you can see the production values are much slower and the perspective takes on a top-down bird's eye view. However, the mission design and open world elements that define the franchise are still present. Back in the day, I used to play this game a lot, during an age I probably shouldn't have been playing it. Jeez, thanks mum. For being so cool. Like many people, most of my time was spent raising hell in the city using cheat codes. Remember those? My only complaints with the original game is your character can be killed with a single bullet and the camera is a bit wonky. Having said that, I still had a lot of fun revisiting the first GTA and I would love to see Rockstar return to this top-down view in another spin-off similar to Chinatown Wars. Now it's time for you to find out a way to call me the donkey, huh? It may not possess the system selling appeal as Final Fantasy VII or Metal Gear Solid, but Intelligent Cube or Kurushi as was known in the Power Region is one of the best puzzle games on the original PlayStation. This unique title involves capturing cubes while avoiding the forbidden cubes and falling off the edge. Sounds easy? Well, not exactly. Intelligent Cube can be ruthlessly difficult and that is honestly what makes the game so addicting. When I was capturing footage, I was going to play this game for an hour, but I winded up playing it for 3 hours straight. The game runs at 60 frames per second, and the dramatic orchestral music adds to the tension. You can also play the game with a friend, and there's multiple extra characters to unlock. A lot of people were knocking Intelligent Cube when the game list was revealed for the PlayStation Classic, but trust me, give this game a shot. I think you might be surprised by it. Released in 1995, Jumping Flash was one of the first 3D platformers predating Super Mario 64 by 18 months. From the early attempt of the genre, Jumping Flash holds up surprisingly well as you jump high into the air through the eyes of your robotic rabbit. In many ways this game feels like you're playing an early version of Mirror's Edge but wrapped in that quintessential Japanese flavor of the 90s. The game is only an hour long, but the developers have packed in a ton of variety in its small runtime. The seven boss fights can also be quite challenging, and there's even a few bonus levels to uncover. I had so much fun revisiting Jumping Flash, I couldn't resist playing for the entire game for this video. It's a real crime that Jumping Flash doesn't get the recognition it deserves, while trash like Bubsy 3D has garnered more attention from the retro community. Well, I guess means we're always trying for a good game design. You ain't done yet. <laughs> the first Metal Gear Solid is universally accepted as a masterpiece but it's still nice to revisit the game once again and reaffirm its legendary status. Donning his signature bandana, Solid Snake must sneak his way through a terror stronghold and stop a nuclear launch. What really set Metal Gear Solid apart from its contemporaries was the attention to detail that was poured into the game's universe and narrative. But what really sold it was the incredible script and voice work, which at the time was the gold standard for video games. Metal Gear Solid also nailed that feeling of being a super spy as you sneak around the building and use an array of different gadgets to overcome various obstacles. 
But the real star of the show was the game's sense of humor and fourth wall moments. The battle with Psychomantis is legendary, and anyone who threw away the CD case would know the pains of that decision. Despite playing through the game dozens of times over the past 15 years, I still find the experience as engrossing as the first time I played it. If you haven't played the first Metal Gear Solid, I'm revoking your hardcore gamers card until you finish it. What are you doing? Mr. Driller is basically what you get when you put Dig Dug and Tetris inside a blender. This quirky puzzle game tasks you with drilling through colorful blocks while maintaining your air supply. The frantic nature of this game will definitely get your blood pumping as you try to avoid being crushed by blocks or running out of air. The game offers multiple modes of gameplay including a time attack and survival mode. Unfortunately, there isn't any two player modes of any kind. But, on the positive side, the game has virtually no loading times and the simple 2D visuals hold up very well in 2018. It even runs at a smooth 60 frames per second and the soundtrack is weird, but surprisingly catchy. Definitely worth a look in if you're a fan of puzzle games. Oddworld AIDS Odyssey introduced us to the creepy Oddworld universe and taught millions of kids to misspell the word Odyssey. This demonic 2D platformer tasks you with escaping the twisted rupture farm. But it's not a 2D platformer in the traditional sense. It plays out more like a puzzle game where you use items and stealth to make it across the board unscathed. I also love Oddworld's creepy atmosphere and bizarre character designs. Nobody would mistake this game for anything else. It's worth mentioning this game did receive a remake in the form of New and Tasty and is available on multiple consoles, including the Vita. Oops. The original Rain Man was a launch title for the PlayStation, and while everyone else was chasing 3D visuals, Ubisoft stuck with 2D sprites. In retrospect, this means Rain Man has aged really well, and boy, what a gorgeous game it is. But it doesn't take long until the honeymoon ends, because Rain Man is one of the most challenging games on the system. If you're looking for a 2D platformer that gives you a good kick in the pants, well, you come to the right place. As much as I do like a good challenge, Rain Man sometimes leans towards the cheat side. Fortunately, cheat codes can make things a little easier, and when you do finally beat the game, you're on top of the world! Yeah! <laughs> Released in 1996, Resident Evil kickstarted the survival horror craze and was Capcom's main cash cow until Monster Hunt became a thing. The original Resident Evil might not sound appealing today with its restricted controls and resource management, but it's these aspects, coupled with the game's horror setting, that makes the game so intense. Of course, I can't forget to mention the game's hilariously bad voice acting, which is so bad, it's good. The version used in the PlayStation Classic is the director's cut, which features the arranged mode that randomizes the item placement and the beginner mode that obviously makes things a little easier. Unfortunately, this release still contains the censorship, but at least you get the original music and not the horrible compositions used in the DualShock version. Of course, these days, you can buy the remake on just about every modern day system, but to be honest, you can't beat the original and its cheesy dialogue. You were almost a Jill sandwich. <laughs> You're right. With the success of Persona 5 renewing interest in the franchise, a lot of people were excited to see the inclusion of the first game on the PlayStation Classic. But for anyone who has exclusively played the fifth game, should prepare themselves for a bit of a culture shock. 
The first game is a different beast in terms of fundamentals and presentation. Gone is the life simulation element, with the gameplay being more akin to an old school dungeon crawler, complete with wizardry style first person exploration. But the deep battle system and persona fusing that characterize the newer entries are still intact. Unfortunately, this release on the PlayStation Classic still retains the botched localization that changed the complexion and names of the characters in order to create the illusion of the game being set in the USA instead of Japan. They also removed a large portion of the game known as the Snow Queen arc. However, the game received a remake on the PSP. Not only was the translation more faithful and the Snow Queen arc was left intact, but they made a ton of improvements on the back end including less loading screens and a better user interface. I will admit that I prefer the darker tone and music of the original PS1 release, but given the choice, I would opt for the remake on the PSP. Racer Type 4 is often heralded as the best entry in the series with its beautiful visuals, tight controls, and excellent soundtrack. Alongside Daytona USA, Ridge Racer Type 4 has the best music of any racing game with a selection of jazz and techno tracks. The overall presentation is excellent with slick menus and an introduction video that I couldn't resist watching every time I booted the game up. In fact, I would sometimes watch the introduction multiple times without playing the actual game. The game has over 200 cars to unlock and two player split screen to help you decide who gets the last Tim Tam. Unfortunately, the bonus disc is not included with a PlayStation Classic. This is an excellent driving game and is up there with the likes of Gran Turismo on the PS1. Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo is basically Puyo Pop, but with chibi versions of the characters from Darkstalkers and Street Fighter. Like Puyo Pop, the goal is to rack up combo chains and shower your opponent with garbage. It's a setup that makes it ideal for two player versus, and fortunately, the game supports this. The game features an arcade and puzzle mode, plus a few extra characters that can be accessed using cheat codes. As you can tell, the visuals are simply adorable, and they still hold up in 2018. Although, as much as I love Puzzle Fighter, it would have been nice if Pocket Fighter was also on the PlayStation Classic. Seriously, Capcom, why do you pretend that Pocket Fighter doesn't exist? Developed by Sony's Ben Studio, Siphon Filter is a spy romp that has you traveling across the globe as you fight the titular virus. With its combination of tense action and cinematic stylings, the game garnered enough acclaim to spawn five sequels. Despite being 20 years old, Siphon Filter is still highly playable thanks to its tight controls and the ability to lock on the targets. There's even a handy map to help you navigate the levels. I also can't forget to mention the amazing music composed by Chuck Dode who would go on to become the director of music at Sony Interactive Entertainment and has worked on many of the company's biggest games, including God of War 2018. I was a huge fan of Siphon Filter back in the day, playing through the original trilogy multiple times. So, of course, I'm going to close this review with a demonstration of everybody's favorite weapon, the Air Taser. According to GameRankings.com, Tekken 3 is the most critically acclaimed game for the original PlayStation, and for good reason. The game plays like a dream with responsive, fluid gameplay being the order of the day. This was also the best looking fighting game on the PlayStation, taking advantage of the system's high resolution mode while running at a smooth 60fps for NTSC users. Tekken 3 was packed to the gills with tons of unlockable content and extra modes to keep you coming back for more. But the real incentive to beat the game with every character 
was the unique CG cutscenes for each character. Simply put, Tekken 3 is an incredible game and a real technical showpiece for the system. It's just a shame that Sony decided to use the inferior power conversion on the PlayStation Classic. Originally released for PCs in 1998, Rainbow Six is a tactical shooter where you save hostages and defuse bombs. Before each mission, you can outfit a team of free soldiers with various gadgets and weapons. In many ways, it was the thinking man shooter where each mission must be tackled with careful planning, while anyone who goes in guns blazing are quickly greeted by death. The original PC release and other console ports were showered with praise, but the PS1 conversion is a complete bust. The whole experience is hindered by poor controls, sloppy animation work, and a low frame rate. I made it to the fifth mission before I became seasick and was forced to switch off the game. Even in 1999, the PS1 version of Rainbow Six was not well received and makes you wonder what possessed Sony to include this in the PlayStation Classic. Twisted Metal is a franchise that was huge in the USA, but never really gained much traction elsewhere. If you never played Twisted Metal before, it's a vehicular combat game where you drive around and destroy the other competitors. It's as simple as that, but what made Twisted Metal stand out was its dark gritty tone. You just didn't see many games like this prior to its release. You could also fight against your friends in true two-player split screen, when other PS1 games required you to purchase another system, another copy of the game, and of course the link cable. Unfortunately these days, the first Twisted Metal feels like a proof of concept compared to its vastly superior sequel, and I don't know for the life of me why Sony didn't go with a second game on the PlayStation Classic. <laughs> We end this trip down memory lane with a brief look at the original Wild Arms. Developed by Media Vision, this is a wonderful JRPG with an old western background. The gameplay doesn't really go against the grain, but there's something about the game's settings and characters that's so engrossing. There's also a stronger emphasis on puzzle solving compared to most RPGs. Presentation wise, the game holds up really well, with 2D sprites being used for the overhead parts, while the battle sequences use simple but clean 3D models. The music is definitely the highlight of the presentation. I forgot how good the music was in this game. Wild Arms doesn't get much love from Sony these days, so I'm glad to see it's included on the PlayStation Classic. Hopefully it can draw new fans to the series and maybe, just maybe, we will finally get Wild Arms 6. A man can dream. <laughs>